Here's why you're watching this video. You are trying to get your video transmitter to work. In fact, there's a fair chance that you asked me a question about your video transmitter not working and I sent you to this video instead of writing out the answer. Don't take it personally. I'd rather all say it once in detail, take you through it here in a video as opposed to have to typing it out hundreds and hundreds of times. I'm Joshua Bardwell and you're gonna learn something today. <laughs> All right, here's the deal. You got a video transmitter and you're trying to get it to change channel or change output power and it's not working. We're gonna try to get it working. And we're gonna make some assumptions here. And the first assumption is that you've got Betaflight 4.1 or newer. Betaflight 4.1 introduced the VTX tables function and it, it gave you some power, but it also screwed a whole lot of people up who couldn't figure out why suddenly their video transmitter wasn't doing what they expected it to do. So if you're on an earlier version of Betaflight, some of this is going to apply, but some of it isn't going to apply. Fair enough, fair warning. And the first thing that you're going to need to do is get your video transmitter wired correctly to your flight controller. And the way that that works depends on your video transmitter. So here we're looking at the wiring instructions for the iFlight SuxX F4. And we can see that they've got instructions for how to wire up a couple of common video transmitters. The common link is going to be that the video transmitter will have a remote control wire. Sometimes it'll be called smart audio. Sometimes it'll be called telemetry. Sometimes it'll be called TX, but there'll be a wire on the video transmitter that you connect to a UART TX pad, a UART transmit pad on your flight controller. So here's the TBS Unify, and we can see one of the wires coming out of it is smart audio. And that's the wire you would connect to the UART TX pad on your flight controller. Here's an image of the Immersion RC Tramp Nano, and we can see that this pad here is labeled TEL or telemetry. That's going to be the one that you're going to connect to your flight controller UART TX pad. And here's an image of the Rush Tank Ultimate. And if we look at the outputs on it, DC, ground, SA, that SA stands for smart audio, and that is the one that you'll connect to your UART TX pad. So without going through 50 different video transmitters, suffice to say that there will be a pad or wire on your video transmitter that is designed for this function. It connects to a UART TX pad on your flight controller. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the ports tab on our flight controller and we're gonna check that it's configured correctly. And what we wanna see is that we've got here in the peripherals column, either IRC Tramp or TBS Smart Audio selected on the row that corresponds to the UART number that the video transmitter is connected to. So if you connected your video transmitter to TX6, that's UART6, and that's the row that you would wanna see that enabled on. In this case, it is enabled on UART1, so we would expect that the video transmitter would be connected to TX1 or T1, or in very, very rare cases, a flight controller will just have a pad labeled SA for smart audio, but that's, that's pretty rare. The bottom line is you need to know what UART number your video transmitter is connected to. Now I said that you need to select either IRC Tramp or TBS Smart Audio, and which one of those is correct depends on the design of your video transmitter. Each video transmitter will support only one of those two protocols. As you might imagine, the Immersion RC Tramp video transmitter uses the IRC Tramp protocol, and the TBS uh, Unify and other Team Black Sheep video transmitters use TBS Smart Audio. Most video transmitters today use Smart Audio, a few use Tramp, and you can usually find the answer by looking at the product page, I guess, for the video transmitter. Um, if, it, if the pad is labeled SA, then obviously that's Smart Audio, and then you can assume that's what it uses. Uh, so the ones that are used Tramp, Immersion RC, obviously. This is an iFlight one, which also uses Tramp, although I think there are some iFlight ones that also use Smart Audio, not sure about that. I think that Maytech also uses the Tramp protocol, Rush uses Smart Audio. Hmm. AKK uses Smart Audio. You may just need to go look at your product page and, and see which one, or just try both of them, but too much trial and error can just, you should just look it up. Now that that's done, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the Video Transmitter tab 
in Betaflight 4.1. This is only in Betaflight 4.1. It's not in earlier versions of Betaflight. And we're going to look over here on the right side of the video transmitter tab. And what we want to see here is device ready, yes. Now device ready, yes, means that the flight controller is talking to the video transmitter. It still doesn't mean that you can change channels or change output power or any of that stuff. It just means that they are talking. And if you don't have device ready, yes, don't do anything else because that's a necessary prerequisite before you can do anything else. If you've got device ready, no, there are a couple of possibilities. Number one, the wiring isn't correct. The wire is not going from the right pin on the flight controller to the right pad on the, uh, sorry, on the VTX. Uh, the other possibility is that you have the wrong protocol selected in the ports tab. You've selected tramp and it needs to be smart audio or vice versa, or you've selected the wrong UART. You've got smart audio enabled for UART one, but the video transmitter is actually connected to UART five. This is especially likely if your flight controller has a plug that goes to the video transmitter and it doesn't clearly label which uh, UART that plug is connected to. There's one more reason why you might not be seeing device ready colon yes. And that comes up if you're using a TBS Unify Evo, which is what I've got here, or any of the other newer TBS video transmitters like the TBS Unify Pro 32. I think it's the Pro 32s and the Evos that have this. And if we look at the wiring diagram for these video transmitters, you'll see that they're labeled smart audio slash crossfire. And that is because these video transmitters can be wired directly to the Crossfire receiver, allowing the Crossfire system to control them instead of the flight controller. Some people prefer to do this because they just like to keep everything in one place and they just like to manage their whole quad using Crossfire. Some people might do this if they didn't have a flight controller at all, like on a fixed wing, it would let you set up your video transmitter as if you had smart audio, but without ever having a flight controller. The reason that you're seeing device ready no is that if we plug in USB to the video transmitter, we go to TBS Agent X. You can download this software from the TBS website. If you have any TBS gear, you definitely need this to update firmware and so forth. If we plug it in and we go to general settings, we can see that the data port, well, it's it ships set to crossfire for crossfire control. Yeah, I had it set to off because I was screwing with it. You're gonna to wanna to change it to smart audio if you are wiring your VTX up to your flight controller. That is the only way to get device ready, yes, if you're doing, if you're wiring it to your flight controller. Well, in my case, we got device ready, no, because my quad is not plugged in. And so the video transmitter is not powered up. So we'll go ahead and plug it in. We'll make sure that the props are off for safety. We'll plug it in. Okay, so I had to click away and come back and now we see device ready, yes. And the video transmitter is talking to the flight controller. We can now proceed. After you've got device ready, yes, and you know that your flight controller and your video transmitter are talking to each other, the next thing you gotta do is load in the correct VTX table. And VTX table is a new function that was added in Betaflight 4.1 that lets you tell the flight controller what bands and channels and output powers your video transmitter supports. And the upside of this is that you can have the exact bands and channels and mostly importantly, output powers. There was so smart audio has output powers, 25, 200, 400, 600. I don't know the exact numbers, but if you had a video transmitter, like on a tiny whoop that only supported 25 milliwatts, those other output powers would still be there. And uh, who knows what happens when you select them? Well, you don't get additional output power. You're just confused as to why your video transmitter is not doing what you think it should do. So VTX tables lets you configure that stuff for yourself, except a lot of the time people don't, and then they're confused as to why their video transmitter is not doing what it's supposed to do. A couple things you need to know about VTX tables. Number one is if your VTX table power it levels are not set up correctly, your VTX will lock itself at 25 milliwatts. And if you can't get your VTX out of to go higher than 25 milliwatts. That may be why. The way that this will manifest is that you will think you're changing output powers, but then you just don't get any additional range. And if you have any kind of LEDs or other indicator on the video transmitter of what its output power is, it'll just stay at 25 milliwatts and it won't respond. So how do you know what v VTX table to load up? Well, if you're lucky, then you're gonna be in a situation like I am 
and I've got a ready to fly quad that already has the VTX table pre-installed. If that happens, then you're good to go. On the other hand, if you've got a fresh flight controller, then you may not have any VTX table loaded. Here's how to know what VTX table to load. If you're using TRAMP protocol, good news, there's only one VTX table. We're gonna to go to this page and we're gonna scroll down and right here is the table that you're gonna need for the Immersion RC TRAMP, depending on if you're in the United States or Europe. Um, if you're anywhere else in the world, pick the USA table. It's only the EU who uses the European table and probably the UK, even though they're not technically part of the EU. Anyway, let's not go there. So I'm gonna pick the RC TRAMP USA table. I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna get this and what I'm gonna do, you can also right click and save as to save it to your hard drive. But I think the easiest thing to do is to just right here in my browser, click and drag to highlight the whole thing. You can also right click and should have select all, right? Nope, how about control A? Oh, that works, control A works. Once I've got it selected, I'm gonna right click and copy. And then I'm gonna go here into the Betaflight configurator and I'm gonna click the button load from clipboard. And that will fill that stuff all in right from the clipboard. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check my power, uh, power levels. And in this case, I'm looking at the power levels from the original Immersion RC Tramp, which are 25 milliwatts, 100 milliwatts, 200 milliwatts, 400 and 600 milliwatts. You can go to the product page for your video transmitter and look up the output powers that it supports. And we can adjust this accordingly. So for example, if I had uh, just 20, let's say I have like just 25 and 200. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower the number of power levels down to two, and then I'm gonna change the second power level. And with the TRAMP protocol, the value is the same as the number of milliwatts that you want. So if it was 25 and 200, I would do 25, 200, and I can make the label. You can actually make the label whatever you want. So we could make the label be uh, low and high. I mean, that, why, why would you do that? But the label is just a text string. It doesn't really have anything to do with anything. But the key takeaway here is that with TRAMP protocol, the value is the number of milliwatts that you're gonna be outputting. So if your video transmitter supports 25, 100, 200, 400, that's what you would have as your value. You would just change the number of power levels to match. And over here in the bottom right, hit save. And then once you've done that, you're gonna test that it's working. Now, if you've got a smart audio video transmitter, things are a tiny bit more complicated because there are different versions of smart audio. There's smart audio version 1.0, which very few video transmitters today use anymore. There's smart audio version 2.0, which many, many video transmitters today use, including all third-party video transmitters. I'm trying to make sure there's not an exception. I'm pretty sure all third-party video transmitters like the Rush Tank VTX or the AKK VTX, these guys all use Smart Audio 2.0, as well as the uh, TBS Unify Pro, the TBS Unify HV. Those all use Smart Audio 2.0. The newest uh, TBS Unify 32, Pro 32, that's it. The Pro 32 and the Evo, they use Smart Audio 2.1. So once again, we're gonna go to this page and we're gonna go and we're gonna download the VTX table that we need. And we're gonna choose either Smart Audio 2.0 or 2.1. We're gonna click on it. We're gonna select all. We're gonna right click copy. We're gonna come over here. We're gonna load from file. Oh, nope, sorry, my bad. We're gonna load from clipboard. That will fill it in. Now, for Smart Audio 2.1, the value is the number of milliwatts converted to dBm. And that's gonna probably confuse a lot of people. So I'm just gonna put a table up here somewhere that has the dBm equivalent for the number of milliwatts that you're gonna output. Because like, let's say you've got a, uh, a TBS Unify Pro 32 that does one watt. Well, the value for that one is gonna be 30, but how would you know that? The label would be one watt. Now, what makes this confusing is that, like I said earlier, if the power values are not correct, 
the VTX, you can't make a video transmitter support one watt output just by going, ha ah, ha, I made it say one watt here in the VTX table. The video transmitter is locked to what output powers it supports. But if you give it an output power that it doesn't support, then it just shuts down and it goes to 25 milliwatts and it refuses to work. So that's the number one way that people get screwed up is they put the wrong power values in. If you have a Smart Audio 2.0 video transmitter, life is a lot easier because the power values for Smart Audio 2.0 are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And it's just the, the video transmitter knows I support 25, 100, 200, 400, 800. And it just knows that's numbers 0, 1, 2, 3. So for a Smart Audio 2.0 video transmitter, you use power values, 0, 1, 2, th however, many, however many output powers it supports. Again, you may need to go to the product page to look this up. And the labels can be anything you want, but you know, 25, 100, 200, etc. Once you have the VTX table loaded, now we're going to verify that it's actually freaking working. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this menu up here to change the settings. And we're going to see if the video transmitter actually changes channels. And the easiest thing to do is to try to like race band for output power 25 milliwatts and save. And then look in your goggles. Don't trust this menu right here because this menu right here on the right side, that shows what the flight controller is asking for. But if the video transmitter isn't working, then it won't actually, it may not actually change channels. So we go put it on channel four, we put it on channel one. And again, look in your goggles and see if it changed channels. That'll verify that it's actually freaking working. As far as output power goes, it can be a little trickier to verify the output power, but you may be able to look at the LEDs on the video transmitter and see that it changes output power. Uh, many, many, most video transmitters will have some kind of readout, an LED or a screen that shows the current settings and you can verify that they're changing. And that is how to get smart audio or tramp telemetry working in Betaflight 4.1 and newer. To recap, number one, get the wiring and the ports tab correct. Number two, see v device ready. Yes, in the video, it wasn't plugged in this whole time. That's hilarious. See device ready. Yes in the video transmitter ta uh, tab. After you see that, then load the correct VTX table and then adjust the power levels to match the power levels supported by your video transmitter. There's one more thing that may screw you up and make it not work. And that is that m some video transmitters ship in what's called a locked mode. And in locked mode, they may refuse to leave 25 milliwatts. The exact way to unlock each video transmitter is going to vary, and I'm not going to try and go through all of them, but specifically TBS Unify always ship in locked mode and need to be unlocked before you can go above 25 milliwatts. Uh, there are a few others out there that also ship in locked mode, and you may need to look up like how to unlock my video transmitter name in Google to see if that's an issue. But that's going to do it for this video. I hope this helped you get your video transmitter working. This is a silly and complicated thing and I'm not going to try and justify it. I'm just going to try and help you get through it. Happy flying. What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or join my Patreon or like just here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.